Hello friends, today we are going to be making my peach cobbler. It's been a while since I've made it, but if you remember back, I think it was around 4th of July, right before 4th of July, somebody gave us a bunch of peaches and I froze specifically a Ziploc bag full of peaches to make this recipe and to share it with you guys. So just for a heads up, you're going to need two cups of either fresh or, fresh or canned uh, peaches and you are going to want a little bit of the syrup. So in this, um, well I'm trying to think what this is called, this casserole uh, thing, I have one stick of butter. Now it says to melt the stick of butter. Now you can tell this, this is pretty old uh, casserole plate but I don't want to put it in the microwave because it has this gold trimming on it and my microwave does not like that too well. So because I don't want to catch my house on fire, what I do is, is I go ahead and I preheat my oven. Now let me double check the temperature for you guys. 350 and on the place on the back of my stove where the heat comes up to, I just sit this uh, casserole plate on top of that you know don't turn it on or anything because the oven's going to do the job and it will automatically just melt this butter now if you don't want to wait that long you can certainly dirty up another bowl and put your sticks of stick of butter in there and melt it for a few seconds in your microwave but i just do it this way because i'm going to have to mix my other ingredients uh to start so i'll be back in a minute with my other ingredients while this melts Okay, so the next step is to take about a fourth a cup of sugar. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. My recipe says an entire cup of sugar. I have always thought that it was too sweet because in the batter that we're going to make to actually put in the casserole thing to make the actual cobbler crust, it has a, an entire cup of sugar in it. So I only use about a fourth a cup of sugar on my peaches. What they just want to do is they want to just ensure that your peaches are good and sweet. These peaches were really, really ripe when we cut them all up and put them in here and they look kind of like unappealing at the moment because of the fact that they've been frozen and they still are a little bit cold here and there from the freezer but all I'm going to do is just kind of stir this in and let this sit a little bit I'm just going to leave that there I'm just going to sit it on the stove over here with this and then I'm going to start mixing in this bowl everything that I need for my batter so the first thing you're going to need for your batter is three-fourths cups of flour. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out. I just put all my dry stuff in here first. And then I want to put a pinch of salt. Then we need some baking powder and I will put the actual amounts below the actual recipe below and you can decide whether or not how much of the sugar that you would like to add to your fruit. Okay we got the baking powder. Now we need a cup of sugar. And I'm just going to add what I got left in my sugar container. And then I'm going to have three-fourths cup of milk, I think. We'll see how much we got here. Probably just enough for this recipe. There we go. We got three fourths of a cup of milk. And let me check and see if there's anything else. We got the flour, salt, sugar. Got the pe peaches ready and the milk. And our butter is melting in our casserole. 
really nicely back here on the stove. So as soon as, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna mix, I'm letting this butter has to melt all the way. But I'm gonna go ahead and stir up this sear batter. This is a very simple recipe. There's nothing, nothing complex or fancy about it. It's, it's very, very easy to make. I'm gonna let you guys see the batter there. Can you guys see it okay? See, it's pretty thin, but as you stir it, it thickens a little bit. And I have it written in the notes to add just a little bit of vanilla extract. You don't have to because it's not part of the original recipe, but when I change things, <laughs> I write it in. You know, a lot of times my mother-in-law would cook and she wouldn't have certain things and she would substitute and the recipes would come out even better. So she got into a habit of writing everything down because you never know, it might be a keeper, a family secret or something that you add that nobody knows <laughs> to a recipe. So there is the batter. As soon as the butter gets completely melted, I'll come back and show you how to put this together. Okay, my butter is pretty good and melted. And it's still got some little things in there, but it'll be fine. What you want to do now is you want to take your milk uh, mixture, you know, that you just made, and you want to pour that in right on top of that butter. And you do not want to stir this. Do not stir it together. Just pour it right on top. Now, if you're, if you're feeding a bigger crowd, you may want to double this recipe, um, you know, to make it bigger. All right, set some dishes back here. Now, my directions say two cups of peaches, and then the rest I'm just going to use um, in uh, a smoothie probably tomorrow morning with almond milk. But it's two cups of peaches cut up. And I just do heaping. I'm just kind of measuring it out in my cup so I know how much I have here. So that's one. And you don't want to stir these either. You just want to lay them on top. Uh, smaller and I put a little extra in here because I dice my peaches kind of big so I do about you know two and a half cups probably really time it's all said and done it's almost this entire thing that I pulled out of the freezer but not quite all right there we go we're just going to lay that right on top I'm going to put this in a 350 degree oven for, let me check the time because I don't want to tell you incorrectly, for one hour, one hour for 350 degrees until crust is a golden brown. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide this into the oven and when it comes out I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, here it is out of the oven, and as you can probably see in the video, I'm assuming it picks it up. It's very much so very, very like molten lava. <laughs> it is, uh, you can see it's still kind of bubbling. It's very, very hot. So I usually take it out of the oven and I let it sit or rest for about 10 minutes um, because nobody wants to eat it when it's this hot. And you can serve this with homemade whipped cream. You can buy whipped topping. You can use the spray whipped cream. 
Um, it is delicious with some vanilla ice cream. So however you want to serve this, it will be top-notch delicious. I will put the recipe in the description box down below for you all. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this Sunday Simple Supper, and I will be talking to you guys again soon. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. And if you wouldn't mind, give me a thumbs up on this video, and I will be talking to you again soon. Bye-bye.